Imagine a world where zombies have taken over and run rampant across the streets, wreaking havoc and eating people wherever they go. That would sound like a living hell to most people, but not this guy, since with how he's living he's already practically a zombie. He lives a constant cycle of work, and tomorrow he's still got to go to work again. It all started three years ago, when he first landed his dream job. He thought it was going to be all sunshine and rainbows, and it looked like that's what it was going to be. Everyone was nice and cheery, and he even met an absolute stunner, sorry, on his first day. It looked like everything was coming up for Tendo, but reality is often disappointing. That day, after that customary office party, the mood suddenly shifts, and the other workers enter drone mode. They pull two consecutive all-nighters at work, and he wasn't allowed to go home until two days later. And that was the day that he realized that his corporation was going to exploit him. The next morning, he wakes up and suddenly doesn't feel all that enthusiastic about his job, but he already went to university for it, so he might as well see it through. The company has got some great policies like vacation days that no one is ever allowed to use. We got unpaid overtime, we got underpaid workers, and a screaming man-baby for a boss. Who wouldn't want to work here? And don't forget the best part, crippling health problems that no one cares about. By the second year, Tendo is starting to succumb to the crippling health issues, and to make it better, his boss gives him another pile of work to do. The only thing keeping him sane is salary and the thought that he'll be able to have a chance with her. But it just keeps getting worse for my dude. Saori is already freaking the CEO of the company, and there goes the last bit of sanity. Tendo now has no idea why he's still even working there, he's gone off the deep end. So much so that he walks into traffic hoping to meet truck Kun, but he has no such luck. He can't get a different job since all the other ones will be just as bad, and if he leaves, he'll just be making it worse for the other employees. By the third year, Tendo is really being pushed, it's gotten so bad that he even tried train Kun just so he won't have to go to work. And this is where he is now, in full-on zombie mode. All he can think about is work now, and everything is in black and white. He wakes up the next morning and has a mini panic attack about not wanting to go to work. He then gets dressed and is about to go to work. But as he drags himself out of house, he notices that there is a letter in his mailbox. He forgot to pay his parking pass, so he trudges over to the building manager's room to try and explain why he didn't pay it. As he gets to the door, he keeps knocking but there is no answer. He spots a half-open door and heads in to talk to the building manager, but what he finds is not what he'd normally expect. He sees the building manager neck deep in someone's guts, and that is the first bit of color he's seen in a long while. He bolts out of the room and tries to run out of the building, but he only finds more zombies waiting for him outside. He turns around and runs upstairs, and all the while he's thinking, what am I gonna do? If this keeps up, I'm gonna be late for work. But as he sees a crashing plane going down overhead, he has an epiphany. All the bosses that made his life a living hell. Those bitches are probably dead. He doesn't have to go to go to work anymore. His life now has meaning again and he can finally see all the color in the world once more. He sits on a rooftop and thinks about all the things that he will be able to do now that he has free time again. He then thinks about Saori and wonders if she's alright. He decides to try and confess to her even if it gets him killed. Who cares if she was the CEO's side chick? With how fat that dude was, he probably won't be able to outrun the zombies, so he's dead by now. And with that, he rides off on his bike to go find where she lives. But when he gets there, he finds the boss's shoes there and the man standing zombified, so he takes the opportunity to hand in his resignation and body slam him out the window. Unfortunately, Saori was also there, and she's also turned into zombie, so with tears in his eyes, he confesses to her to gain closure and runs off to avoid being eaten. That night, he thinks about what he's gonna do from now on, with the state of the world, he could die at any moment, so why not make the most of it? With that, he creates his bucket list of things he wants to do before he dies. The next day, Tendo is having a nightmare about his hellish working conditions and wakes up screaming, but relief washes over him as he realizes that his world is a lot better now. It's a zombie apocalypse, and he's all here for it. With the new zeal he now has for life, he is finally able to clean out his entire room for the first time in years, and he's never felt better. He grabs a beer from the fridge and fully savors the taste as his first beer of freedom. Meanwhile, the news is covering the story as it unfolds. The city is in chaos, there are fires raging everywhere, and the newsroom is also in danger of being overrun. And through all this, the news lady is still standing there doing her job. Tendo watches as the news broadcast cuts out and he knows that objectively, the world has gone to hell. But that's not his problem right now, all he cares about is drinking beer today and lazing around to make up for the years of torture he had put himself through. But when he goes to the fridge to grab another one, he is hit with a grave reality. He's out of beer. This is the worst thing that could possibly have happened to him today. He was going to just laze around, but now he's got to go to get more beer, and it's not gonna be an easy trip. 
But what kind of lazy day would it be if he didn't have beer to drink? So as much as he wants to stay put, he's gonna have to do it. While he's having his moral dilemma in another room, there is a couple who are freaking the hell out over this apocalypse, as one would normally do. The guy tells her that if they can hold out for one more day, then maybe they'll be saved, but no one's coming to save them. He goes out onto the balcony and prays for someone. Anyone to come and help, and as he says this, he locks eyes with Tendo, who is shimmying his way down a pipe. The guy is freaked out and tells Tendo to come in while it's still safe, but Tendo says he's alright for now, and he just has to go grab a few things. He then introduces himself as their next-door neighbor. The guy is taken aback by Tendo's nonchalant attitude while hanging from a pipe, but he introduces himself as Kosaka. Tendo wants to be nice, and since he's going to the convenience store anyway, he offers to get them some stuff like noodles and toilet paper. As Tendo races his bike down the street, the zombies begin to take notice of him and chase him. He realizes that if he gets surrounded, he might actually die here. But there's no way he's going to go the day without any beer, so this is a necessary action. He gets to the convenience store and there's a bike outside the store with a camera on it. He doesn't notice that because he is too focused on getting beer, so he pries the doors open and begins singing his beer song while shopping. Then he notices a girl standing by the fridge and he immediately dies of cringe at the song he was singing. He tries to play it off by acting like nothing happened, but the girl says nothing in return. Things are only going to get more awkward if he stays silent, so he keeps talking. But she just walks past him, so he tries to get her to give her contact info, but she finally says something. He risked his life just to go get some beers, and he didn't even get any water for the hangover. Someone with such poor survival skills would only be a liability to her. And to make it that much worse, he left the door halfway open and now the zombies are coming through. Tendo tries to get in front of her to protect her, but she pulls him back as a truck breaks through the wall, killing the zombies by sheer coincidence. But he did learn some lessons from this. He should analyze the risk before doing something and always close the door. He hopes to meet that girl again, but now isn't the time for that. His bike was destroyed by the truck, so he's got to make a run for it. But there's no way that he's gonna outrun the zombies, so he's got to think of something else. Luckily for him, there's a scooter just laying there and he's able to use that to escape. He's upgraded his ride and that gets him thinking. There are a lot of vehicles with keys still in them since the apocalypse started at rush hour, so maybe there's something better. And just as he thinks that, he spots something out of the corner of his eye. He's now got a hot rod. He finally makes it back to the apartment building and he stops by the apartment of Kosaka. But what he finds is a bloody mess, and I don't think they'll be joining him anytime soon. That night, he was reminded that at any moment he might die. But if that's the case, he still wants to live to the fullest and do all the things he wasn't able to do while he was working. He thinks long and hard and writes down everything that he would want to do. The next day, we see the girl in a penthouse. She begins her morning routine of a 10-kilometer run on a treadmill, and she's taking the serious approach to surviving the zombie apocalypse. She starts analyzing the zombies' movement patterns, but she needs to go down there and actually see the zombies to get that data and also to get supplies. So this is why she was at the convenience store earlier. When she ran into Tendo, she was already analyzing him, and that truck that crashed into the store was predicted. She then looks back on the footage of Tendo that she got, and she thinks to herself that maybe his way of doing things isn't so bad after all. With another set of survivors, there is a little girl crying the loss of her father, and the club manager is trying to console her a little. He tells her that she's done great by hanging in there till now, but as he's talking to her, one of his men comes up to him and tells him that the zombies have returned. The manager tells the girl that he has got to go do something, and he will definitely come back to her. They head out to face the ensuing horde in a badass way and they begin to fight to protect all the people that are left in the club. Meanwhile, Tendo is out here living his best life with his new motorcycle. He's come to the Shinjuku district looking for his best friend, Kencho. Earlier that day, Tendo was trying to grow in a cool beard and to speed it along, he tried using a marker to draw it on, but it doesn't end up looking like he wanted it to, so he gives up on it and just shaves it off. He ponders on what to do today when he finally notices that his phone is receiving messages again. He's really happy to see this because it means that the internet must be back up and running. Since he started working three years ago, he hasn't had any chance to talk to his old friends, so he would really like to get to catch up with them. He sends out a bunch of messages to all of his friends and waits for replies, but then he realizes that the only reason the internet is working again is that network traffic is down, meaning that most of his friends are likely dead by now. This realization makes him really sad. All those years of skipping on hanging out with friends just to work overtime, what a huge waste of time. He keeps scrolling through his contacts and comes across one of his friends, Kencho. Now he knows this guy is a fighter, so there is no way he would just lay down and die like that. Meanwhile, Kencho is about to lie down and die like that. He's been stuck in this room for three days with nothing but water, 
and the hallway is too crowded with zombies for him to have even the slightest hope of escaping. And even worse, he's stuck in here with this zombie woman, and the only that saved him was his love for bondage. He sits there and thinks this is it. His life even starts flashing before his eyes, and he sees memories of Tendo while they were still in college. At that moment, Tendo actually called Kencho, and he was really shocked to see that he got a call. Tendo asks for Kencho's location, and he says he's in Shinjuku. But there's no way that Tendo would be able to make it all the way there without being eaten by any zombies. But that isn't going to stop him, and that is why Tendo went to Shinjuku. On the way, he recalls how he used to meet up with Kencho for drinks, but Kencho was actually a successful real estate contractor, with good pay, high praise from his bosses, and an actual love life. Kencho tells Tendo that he should probably quit his job, but at that point, Tendo was still too deep in the rabbit hole to notice that there was he was actually right. So instead, he gets angry at him and cuts their little hangout short. He never got the chance to apologize for that, so he's going to make sure he does that now. Meanwhile, the manager from before is about to reach his final moments, and as the zombies slowly approach him, he waits for death. However, a car horn in the distance is enough to distract the zombies and make them leave him alone. It also attracts the zombies that are holding Kencho in that room, so Tendo is finally able to go meet him. Kencho finally sees that the zombies are gone, and just then Tendo shows up and starts yelling at the top of his lungs, apologizing for not taking his advice back then and getting jealous of him. But all the shouting draws in more zombies, and they are forced to retreat to the top of the roof. They get up there, but the zombies are right on their tail, so they are now stuck. Kencho thinks this is it for him again, but Tendo isn't about to let it end like this. So Tendo tells Kencho that they should jump across the rooftops, but he isn't too sure he can make the jump. Tendo goes for it, and he makes it, but now it's Kencho's turn, but he doesn't want to do it. He apologizes to Tendo for making him feel jealous back then. The truth is that he hated his job, he was no better than a scum with how he forced people into bad contracts, so he bragged about all the good things he got to cope with it. What he always wanted to be was a stand-up comic. Tendo tells him that it's not too late for that, and Kencho realizes that he doesn't have to give up here, so he starts running and takes the jump, and for some reason, he takes off all his clothes midway through. He isn't able to make the entire jump, so he ends up hanging off a huge ledge, but Tendo pulls him up in time. But the worst thing imaginable happens while he's being pulled up, he scrapes his nuts. After that, the two spend the night drinking naked, as all the homies do. Tendo is playing a zombie video game on the roof, but he dies in the game, so if he rolls back in the hammock he's laying in. Kencho has been cooking for him, and the food is the best thing Tendo has ever tasted. Even though he's amazed with the food, he also comments on how Kencho is probably great at everything. Which would explain why he's so popular with the ladies. Kencho says this much cooking ability is normal, and Tendo's lack of skill is probably why he hasn't had any luck in his love life. Tendo swears that he'll get a date today, but his options are. Well, let's just say they're not ideal. Later, Kencho is taking a look at Tendo's list, and it's kind of unrealistic. Like seriously, what are the chances of him meeting a flight attendant in the apocalypse, and even more so getting the chance to wine and dine them? It would take some cosmic alignment voodoo to get that to happen. But regardless, Tendo is still going to do whatever he wants to do, even if it seems unrealistic. Kencho says that's fine, but the list doesn't even have up to a hundred things on there, so Kencho starts adding his own dream of becoming a stand-up comic to the list, and by proxy, Tendo has to become one too. But since Tendo saved his life, he's along for the ride for anything that he can think of. That being the case, Tendo asks if they can head to the mall to pick up a mega flat screen TV. And so, they head out on the hot rod to go get one. But before they can get there, they run into a flaming dead end, and there's even a firefighter still there as a zombie. And to make things worse, Truck-kun comes barreling towards them, and Kencho is freaking the hell out. Tendo has a flashback to what happened back on his beer run, and he gets an idea to jump the tanker. It's a crazy idea, yes, but I don't see Kencho coming up with anything. They manage to jump it, but the tanker explodes in a fiery inferno, forcing them to go into an underground mall to escape the fire. But the mall has a lot of zombies in it, and escape isn't an option anymore, so they jump off the motorcycle and start running to a nearby store with the door slightly open. The zombies chase them, but they manage to make it through and slam the door down on the zombies' fingers. A flashlight turns on, and the two turn around to find three women and one man cowering in the back. They are a bit defensive at first since they don't know if Tendo and Kencho are infected or not, but after they say they aren't, Kencho is thankful that there are other survivors. The girl doesn't see why he's so thankful since they are trapped in here with zombies on all sides. But at least it's a convenience store and they won't be starving anytime soon. If they're going to have to get through this, they aren't going to do it sober. They start scouring the store for food and liquor, and they sit down to share it. 
One of the girls asks if they can introduce themselves. Kencho introduces himself and Tendo and the guy in the corner is still freaking out, so he asks the girls if they know each other. They introduce themselves as Reika, Maki, and Yukari. And when Kencho asks how they know each other, they say they're co-workers and their flight just landed in Japan when this whole mess started. They are flight attendants. Tendo realizes that this is finally his chance to whine and dine a flight attendant, but they are obviously upset about the situation. And in that moment, he also realizes that he has absolutely no game. He goes up to Eureka and tries to talk to her, but his lack of game is very evident. He starts thinking about what to do and looks to Kencho for help, but my guy is already there rising up Maki. And as Tendo is standing there, watching the master work his magic, Kencho looks at him and gives him a devious smile to rub it in. Tendo is at a loss for what to do, so he tries to be funny and snorts a whole bottle of alcohol. And that gets everyone in a partying mood. Later, Tendo is puking his guts out when Eureka comes to check on him, and he thinks he might still have a chance. Rika is still drinking and is currently venting all her frustration on the cowering guy, and yo, what the fuck? This dude was bitten, and he just didn't tell anybody. As Rika continues rambling, the dude comes up from under her, and she thinks he's trying to eat her out, but she isn't going to let him. He does indeed want to eat her, but more in a literal sense. Her screams are heard all across the store and wake up Kencho and Maki. Maki has had the brain screwed out of her, so she couldn't care less about the scream she just heard, and Tendo is still in the bathroom with Eureka. She lets him down nicely and tells him that she actually already has a boyfriend. Kencho and Maki finally come down to check on Rika, and Maki is still dazed and confused. But when they find Rika turn into a zombie, she immediately lunges at Maki and rips her face off. She then lunges at Kencho, but he knocks her lights out with a suitcase. But where did the old man go? Tendo and Eureka are having a chat about their jobs, and she shares with him how an old man made her question every choice that led her to become a flight attendant. And while they are finally bonding and talking about their dreams, the old man comes down the stairs and bites her before they can react. Tendo knocks the man down the stairs, but he doesn't want to leave her here. However, he has no choice as she is going to turn soon, and the old man is still here. He starts crying as he runs away and meets Kencho, who has a surprise for him. He managed to grab the flat screen TV. The two manage to escape on their motorcycle, and Tendo is reflecting on what just happened. He's going to make sure that he can remember what his dream was, and he adds it to the list. When Tendo was younger, he used to be a young John Wick. He would take on upperclassmen like it was his normal morning routine, all for the sake of a nice dog. He was something of a superhero back then, however, he wakes up from his dream. Later on, Kencho is checking out the news and confirms that Japan is thoroughly screwed. However, the military was able to secure some of the more secluded villages in the mountains. Hearing this, Tendo thinks his family must be safe, since they are in one of the most secluded villages in Japan. Later, while Tendo is helping Kencho get his hair for his new beginning, he makes a declaration. He's going to become John Wick. He plans to become someone who goes around saving people from zombies, but Kencho is a little skeptical. For one thing, Tendo doesn't even have a gun, but he's already thought of something to fix that. And a new item has been added to the list to become a superhero. The two later head to the aquarium for Tendo's plan, and it's in pretty bad shape since all the workers had abandoned it. They look around the place for a bit until Tendo finds just what he was looking for. Meanwhile, a bus full of people is getting stuck in the zombie traffic, and the driver tells them that they are going to have to wait out the horde. But at least they are in a sealed bus, and there is no way any zombies are going to be getting in. Come on, what the hell? Well, now thanks to this guy, all the bus passengers have to run for their lives, and now they are getting slaughtered. This one girl has managed to escape so far, and she's run towards the aquarium. As she spots it, she thinks she will be safe once she gets inside, but then horror movie logic kicks in, and she falls over. And unfortunately for her, Yusin Bolt was in the zombie crowd, and he is making a mad dash straight for her. As she's about to become zombie food, Tendo runs out of the aquarium and tackles Bolt, launching him a good 10 meters away. This was his secret weapon. He got Shark's suit from the aquarium to protect him from the zombie bites, and if a shark can't get through this stuff, then there's no way a zombie is going to. And with that, he has achieved his superhero goal. He spots more people who need help and tells all of them to head into the aquarium for safety. And among the people, he notices his second crush there. But he has no time to think about that because Bolt is back for round two. And while the suit may be able to prevent bites from getting through, it's still going to hurt like hell. And after he falls to the ground, he gets swarmed by the Olympic team and Kencho just goes, you are on your own, buddy. Tendo eventually manages to throw the zombies off the bridge and into the river, and luckily for him, they hadn't trained for the triathlon. He had his back into the aquarium and Kencho greets him like he didn't just leave him out there. After that, Tendo goes up to her talk, and while he just wanted to talk, she starts roasting my man's entire existence. 
Kencho tries to defend Tendo's honor, but the roasting was too thorough. After that, there is a loud crash sound heard throughout the entire aquarium. Tendo and Kencho decide to go check it out, but when they find the source of the sound, they find something horrifying. The zombies couldn't find any swimmers, so they called in a shark. The shark starts chasing them, and they run to warn all the other people. Tendo tries to stay behind and fight, but then he realizes that is a shark with legs. You don't mess with a shark with legs. They get cornered in a room with even more zombies, and they start heading for the emergency exit, but then this girl just grabs Tendo's crush, stops for a second, and then pushes her aside because she's scared. And now Tendo's crush is likely a gunner. Upon realizing that she isn't in there with them, Kencho tries to go help her, but the door has been warped too much for it to open. He looks around to ask Tendo what he should do, but Tendo already left to help. On the other end, Tendo's crush is faced with a huge shark, and she can only blame herself for not realizing that you never stay with large groups during zombie chase. She has accepted her death, but Tendo hasn't so he jumps from an air vent and tackles the shark. She is shocked that he would risk his life to come save her even after the roasting she gave him. What reason does he have for coming back? But Tendo doesn't need a reason to help someone, he is just doing what he wants to do. She is amazed by Tendo's resilience and asks him if he's got a plan yet, but he hasn't thought of one. As they run, she comes up with a plan to beat the shark. Since sharks are sensitive to electric charges, if they were to shock it, it would become confused and unable to attack them. While distracting the shark, Tendo gets smacked through a wall and is down for the count and Kencho is trying to figure out a way to save him before he becomes shark food. So he comes up with a foolproof plan. He's going to bait the shark with his ass. But once the shark takes the bait, he starts to regret his decision. But that distraction was enough to let Tendo get back up, and the girl has finally found some batteries, so she tosses them to him and he uses them to shock the shark silly. After escaping, they walk out together and Kencho asks if she isn't going to follow the either group, but she says she's done with groups for now. She still doesn't understand why Tendo would risk his life for her, but Tendo says she's someone precious to him now, so he would save her regardless. This gets her flustered, and she finally agrees to give Tendo her contact information. Later, Tendo is in a store, staring down the Rolex on the wall which he could never hope to afford. But now that the world has ended, he can have as much ice on his wrists as he wants. Then Kencho shows him some even more expensive bling, and I believe it is safe to say that these two are dripped out of their minds right now. That night, Tendo finds that they are out of water now, and the city has gone completely dark. Their phones are still charged, but they can't get any news since the stations are down. They very well may be the last people in the city, so maybe they should start taking the zombie apocalypse seriously. But before that, they take in the beautiful skyline that is visible thanks to all the power going out. And tomorrow, they head for Tendo's hometown, Gunma. The next morning, they begin packing for the trip, and Tendo says his goodbyes to his old life. It is normally a five-hour drive to Gunma, but there's no telling what the traffic will be like now. Since it's going to be a long trip, Kentro asks if they are going to finally get a gun for self-defense, but Tendo had something else in mind. If they are going to be traveling, then they are going to do it in style. So Tendo wants to go get a luxury camping vehicle. And by some twist of fate, they run into Shizuka there as well. Tendo tries to get her to go with them, but he has still got no game and she shoots him down immediately. Kencho, on the other hand, is able to strike up a conversation with her and find out that she doesn't have a license. So they manage to convince her that it will be safer to go with them. They go into the car show and are amazed by all the cars there. There is Yuma Tank RV for no other reason than it is cool as hell. Shizuka is still all about practicality and is trying to pick something that can drive well and has good fuel rates, but Tendo is all in with the luxury camper. He has found his third love, but Shizuka is still on the side of practicality and argues that there is no way they could get anywhere in that thing. However, she spots an RV that makes her question everything she has just said. The guys make fun of her for falling in love with a design when she was all about practicality a minute ago, but she says it's different. But thanks to all the noise they made, they now have a bigger problem as they are surrounded by zombies and are forced to get into a random RV and drive off. As they leave the city, Kendo is riding the bike beside them and Tendo is driving the RV. Tendo is bothered that the roads are so empty even though it is a weekend and Shizuka says it is probably because no one had enough time to leave the city at all after the zombie outbreak. He asks if she knows anything about the zombies, and she speculates that it is a virus and if they manage to create a vaccine for it then the world might have a chance to bounce back. But that has nothing to do with them unless they manage to survive in the first place. That evening, they were getting ready to set up camp for the night, but then they run across spike strips laid out on the road, and the worst thing in a zombie apocalypse comes out, people. And to make it worse, the gang leader is Tendo's old boss. I bet Tendo wishes he got that gun now, doesn't he? Tendo starts getting PTSD from all the abuse he suffered at the hands of this scumbag. 
This was his whole plan. He made them crash, so they are stuck here. And he wants to force Tendo to work for him again. Shizuka isn't falling for his BS and calls him out on how he makes it seem like he is helping them and protecting them from looters. But he is the looter here. And he is saying in all of the smile on his face. But with no other choice, Tendo is forced to work for him again, and his hell is started back up. Shizuka tends to Kencho's wounds and Kensho apologizes for causing them to have to come here. But she tells him that they probably planned this whole thing out from the start and had no choice. Tendo sees how the others here are being worked to death, but there's nothing he can say about it. While moving equipment, Tendo comes across some beers, gets a glint of joy in his eyes, tries to cool them down for everyone to enjoy, but the boss comes by and is annoyed that Tendo would waste his precious electricity on something like employee satisfaction. Tendo is gripped by his PTSD, but then the employees come and see the beer so he is forced to give it to them, otherwise he is going to become the bad guy. He is still nothing more than an exploitative bastard, but he holds all the power here. So there's nothing they can do to oppose him for now. He even started using zombies as labor and tells Tendo to be more like the zombies, a piece of equipment that can't think for himself. This is what happens when there are no labor unions. That night, Kencho asks Shizuka if she has noticed how Tendo has been acting strange lately, but she has already pieced together what Tendo's working life was like and knows what it feels like to be controlled and has her own experience with being exploited. So she knows that Tendo can't find the willpower to fight back. When she was a little kid, she was walking home from school on a rainy day when she came across a little puppy in a box. She couldn't just leave it there, so she decided to take it home, but upon asking for her father's permission to keep the dog, he immediately tells her to eat the dog. He sees no point in taking care of a sickly dog, and she needs to rise above her peers and not waste her time on such childish things as caring for another being. She's literally like four years old, but he is telling her to be ruthless and calculating in her actions, completely willing to toss aside anyone who she sees as weak. A human resources lady. Back to the present, Tendo's scumbag boss is putting on a cheery act to welcome him and his crew to the team. He has everyone enjoying themselves and drinking to their heart's content, while Tendo is over there slaving away. These two guys are having fun and asking the real important questions. Would you get infected for smashing a zombie chick? But when one of them runs out of beer, they call over to Tendo to bring them some more, and my guy is an absolute mess right now. He trips over his feet and falls to the ground, dropping the beer and even though it is the apocalypse, some things remain the same as the people still treat the wait staff like shit. Tendo is repeatedly saying he's sorry as the people yell at him while elsewhere, his old boss is having a hissy fit over a granny pouring his alcohol and states that he will only accept booze that is poured by women with the finest boobs. So he calls over to Shizuka and orders her to pour his drink. She reluctantly agrees and does as he says while he stares down her assets. She gives him his drink. But he then forces her to have one, even though she didn't want one, and look at the way this dude is licking his lips, it's obvious he wants to turn this into a different type of anime. After she's done drinking, he asks her to let him fondle her, to which she ignores him. So he yells for Tendo to come over and bring him another bottle of booze so he can get Shizuka drunk enough to the point she might find him to be slightly less ugly. But sad to say, even alcohol isn't gonna be able to fix that face. When Tendo doesn't respond in half a second, he yells even louder to get the attention of a frazzled Tendo and makes him give him another bottle of beer. However, between the lack of sleep, heat stroke, and constant yelling, Tendo accidentally hands him an empty bottle, and Ganzu loses it. He starts yelling at Tendo and simultaneously wasting at least six gallons of spit on his rant, while Shizuka is still sitting at the table, lost in thought. She thinks back to how from the very day she was born, her father had started teaching her how to take advantage of the people around her in order to become a CEO, manually trying to rip out her heart and soul, because a CEO won't be needing that. She tried to keep her heart and hid that dog away in the attic of the house to try to nurse it back to health. She went all in and even started reading up on animal health to better help it. After a lot of work, she finally managed to get the dog to eat and recover from its ailments. She was so happy that she finally had a friend to play with, but happiness would mean she would have a heart and her father couldn't have her be held down by silly things like feelings or empathy. So he did the only reasonable thing he could do, he killed the dog. After that, her heart was gone and she settled into just listening to everything her dad told her to do. It was suffocating, but there was nothing she could do to oppose him because it was his house and his rules. So she was effectively brainwashed into leaving all her life decisions to him, and now, Ganzu is doing the same thing to Tendo by repeatedly tearing down whatever confidence he may have had left in his head. After Tendo accidentally drops some canned foods, he begins laying into him about being a stupid and useless, also saying he's gonna have to work there longer to make up for this. Tendo tries to object, but Ganzu begins to lay into him once more, and now Tendo has been thoroughly broken. With his methods having worked, he goes in to finish the final stage of his plan, gaslighting. 
He puts on the kind act to get Tendo to trust him and says he is only doing this for his own good, so he wants Tendo to stay and work here permanently. The outside is dangerous and you never know when you will encounter the next horde of zombies. So does either stay here in the safe compound and work under Ganzu or leave and face the apocalypse alone? But me personally, I would take on the apocalypse any day of the week before I work under this walking trash bag. However, Tendo has lost too many brain cells from listening to Ganzu's voice, so he is not able to make the right decision here and falls for the gaslighting. So as it starts to get dark, Tendo is still out working like a zombie. Shizuka was resting in the camper when she came across the bucket list that Tendo made, and couldn't help but smile at the sight of the dream written on the list, so she added one more to it. The next day, some of the other guys are out on a supply run when they take a break and one complains that Ganzu is the leader, but he never actually does any work. But the other guy is just glad they don't get treated like the people in Tendo's shoes. He tells the shorter guy to hurry up and close the door to the truck before a zombie climbs in, but would you look at that, a zombie already climbed in. Meanwhile, back at the compound, Shizuka and Kencho are all packed up and ready to go as they had agreed, but Tendo comes out and starts saying he is going to stay here and work for the chief from now on. Kencho can't believe what he is hearing and thinks it must be a joke, but Tendo is dead serious. He has been tricked into thinking he is a dumb, ugly idiot who wouldn't last a minute in the outside world, and with how he is acting, he has definitely become smooth brain. Shizuka begins to walk away, prepared to leave Tendo behind if he won't be joining them, but as Tendo continues to talk about how he needs to repay Ganzu for all the kindness that he has shown him, so the only option he has is to stay here and listen to his every command, Shizuka recalls her childhood and sees a lot of herself in the way Tendo is acting right now. So before she leaves, she turns around to give Tendo the wake-up call he so desperately needed. She tells him Ganzu is only using him. What he really wants is for Tendo to give up his free will and sense of self, so he can become a mindless drone. He doesn't care about you, he just wants slave labor. He's fat, got lips like the Kardashians, but a face even his mother couldn't love, so he tries to get other people's lives to be just as bad as his to make himself feel a bit better. And as the roasting continues, everyone just stares in amazement as she's absolutely violating Ganzu. With how things are in the world, she can't say which is the right choice between staying and leaving, but what she does know is that she doesn't want to be anywhere near Ganzu or his nasty B.O. any longer. So she asks Tendo what he wants to do as she hands him back his bucket list and shows him the item he added to it. Ganzu sees that she is actually getting through to him, so he tries to put a stop to it by grabbing his notebook out of his hand and throwing it to the ground. But that was the final straw that sent Tendo over the edge, the anime is named after this book, so this kind of disrespect is not going to go uncontested. Tendo somehow manages to get under Ganzu's feet to stop him from stepping on it, and gets up having finally grown a pair of balls. However, he is still being much nicer than I would have been. He just says, what the hell was wrong with me? Ganzu, thank you, but this ain't it fam, I never want to see your ugly ass again. Ganzu is shocked by Tendo's sudden self-confidence, he tries to continue the gaslighting and says Tendo still owes him. But Tendo counters by saying, I miss the part where that's my problem. Even if I become a zombie, it's still gonna be better than being worked like a zombie by you. And as he says this, the resource collection team returns, happily unveiling their great haul for the day, but instead, he gets mauled by a zombie. They get back on the road and Tendo is really excited that he's managed to do more than 30 things on his list. At this rate, he might get to 100 before the end of the month, but Shizuka is worried he might die if that happens. As they continue down the road, they come across a truck with several zombies piled up around it. And that can only mean one thing, there is someone in there that is attracting these zombies, so that means they found their first survivor on the road, and Tendo is excited to finally get to be a superhero again. He hurriedly puts on his shark suit and gets into stance for another hero arc, but the door to the truck is kicked open and the spotlight is stolen from him by the historically accurate samurai who gets out, jumps 20 feet in the air and proceeds to lay waste to the zombies. That was a triple kill, with a regular bow for crying out loud. They can't believe what they are seeing, but Tendo just finds it to be really cool. The samurai takes off its mask to reveal its identity as a German girl, Beatrix. And as she thanks them for their help, Shizuka has been dethroned as best girl. After explaining the whole situation, the group finds out that Beatrix had come to Japan because she loved the culture here so much. Everything from the historical battles to the tentacle hentai, which explains why she had the samurai armor. Tendo opens up the back of the truck she was in, and finds that it was a refrigeration truck with a ton of tuna in the back. She asks for his understanding because there is a very important mission which she must accomplish, and to do that, she needs a working vehicle, so she asks for their help in delivering the fish to Takasaka. Beatrix seems really sincere in her request, so Shizuka is considering going along with it since she might be transporting food to survivors. 
Tendo gets down in front of her and asks why she wants to have that fish delivered so badly, so she starts explaining. She had gotten her first glimpse of Japan the same way most kids do, from watching H anime. And ever since then, she had worked hard to save up and come here to experience it for herself. However, just as she landed and was about to finally experience her dream, the world said a huge fuck you to her, and the zombie apocalypse began. But she wasn't going to let her dream die out just yet. So she found the last living sushi chef that didn't work at a gas station good at his job and got him to agree to make sushi for her if she were able to find him some fish. So her reason for doing all of this is sushi. And luckily for her, Tendo heard sushi and was all in on the plan. The others go along with it as well because why not, so they all head to the city to meet the sushi man. Beatrix leads the way there but is worried because the last time she spoke with the sushi man was over three days ago, so she has no guarantee that he is still alive, but the faith in the sushi drives her not to give up hope yet. They get to a turn and find that the street is full of a ton of zombies. However, that isn't going to stop them from getting their sushi, so Beatrix and Tendo suit up. They are very motivated, but if you are wondering if they have a plan here, they do not. However, Shizuka thinks she has a pretty good one and it involves using the most irresistible bait known to zombie kind, Kencho's ass. They take the bait, so Kencho starts running like crazy to get away from them, and as they are all backed into a corner, Tendo traps them all in with a truck, leaving Beatrix free to hack away at the zombies one by one. The sound of the car attracts even more zombies, and it is now time for the next phase of the plan. With all the zombies in one spot, they begin to throw bottles of alcohol at them, and are about to light the flames, but they didn't check to see if the matches they had still worked. So now, the zombies are overwhelming the makeshift barricade. And now, they are heading towards their RV. If the zombies surround it, they won't be able to move or get back in, and all that fish, and their hopes of sushi will be gone. Tendo is not going to let that happen, so he jumps down to defend the truck with his life, because he would rather turn into a zombie than not eat sushi ever since they met Beatrix an hour ago. They are mowing their way through the onslaught of zombies in superhuman fashion, but there are evidently too many of them for just two people to handle. Things were looking grim, however, Shizuka had a backup plan and used a drone to lure the zombies back into the main square. She is through with playing games and has a whole ass station covered in fuel to blow the zombies sky high. Kencho throws a Molotov into the mix and zombie fireworks erupt as they all begin to catch fire and the group watch from a nearby rooftop. With all the zombies taken care of, nothing stands in their way any longer and they are able to do what they've been wanting all day. Stuff their faces full of fish meat. The sushi chef was originally from Gunma, but had spent the past 30 years of his life honing his fish serving skills, so it made him incredibly happy that there were people out there who still wanted to eat his sushi. While the others had already started eating, Beatrix was hesitant to take her first bite. She grabs the sushi, and after dipping it in the soy sauce, takes her first bite and has been brought to tears. Seeing this, the sushi man is brought to tears, this is what it's all about, the tireless weeks he worked, missing his daughter's wedding, and not even attending his wife's funeral. All of it was worth it for this moment. I'm not even kidding, that was what he said. He must have realized just how depressing his obsession with work was, because he then proclaims that since no other living customers are gonna be here for a while, they are gonna drink all the alcohol in the store this night. The next day, the gang is back on the road, but are in for a really uncomfortable ride due to the current heatwave they are experiencing. Inside, Beatrix is complaining about the heat while simultaneously proving why she deserves to dethrone Shizuka as best girl. The group haven't had decent showers in days, so they are all starting to smell very bad, so with that being said, this is gonna be the bath episode. They all get changed into bathrobes, and Beatrix once again has Shizuka beat in terms of volume. Having an overwhelming love for Japan, Beatrix is very knowledgeable about the hot springs, but no one actually caught much of what she was saying aside from the last part. They were advertised in the Edo period as a cure for all diseases, aside from love sickness and down bad syndrome. So it won't help Tendo, who is down bad for Shizuka right now. He tries steering the conversation into flirting territory, but Shizuka still maintains her position of finding love to be unnecessary while indirectly calling Tendo broke. Moving on, the guys finally get to the men's bath and are eager to hop in and so is Shizuka, so she's about to head over to the women's bath, but Beatrix returns, saying there isn't anything hot water over there. It appears that the pump for that section is broken, and hearing this, the boys go into philosopher mode. Given the circumstances, it would seem that there is no other choice. But do not be mistaken, we take no joy in this, now come join. But Shizuka shut that down really quick. However, their speech she seems to have resonated with Beatrix, so she fully disrobes to join them. Only making the down bad syndrome worse. However, before she can get in, Tendo and Kencho look behind them to find that the bath was actually full of a bunch of naked zombie men. So they are all forced to run for the hills. 
They managed to escape, and luckily, there were no mountain climber zombies anywhere to be seen, so they are safe for now. But what good is it being safe, if they didn't even get to enjoy the hot springs? They all cry over their misfortune, but they fall asleep soon afterwards. Tendo wakes up and is feeling thirsty, so he wanders into the forest to find some sustenance. But instead, he finds something much better, a natural hot spring just sitting in the middle of the mountain. He wastes no time in taking off all of his clothes and getting into the water. But as he drifts along in the waters, he bumps into a person and is faced with the glorious reality that he is in. He is in the hot spring with a naked Shizuka, which is great for him, but won't help with his thirstiness. He apologizes for the situation, to which she says it's fine, but he should get out immediately. However, he flips the script on her and says no. He's been wanting to get in one of these all day, and he'd rather die than miss out on this opportunity. While they sit there in awkwardness, Shizuka begins to apologize to Tendo for rejecting his ideas on how a relationship should work. Growing up, she was taught that there are two kinds of people, those that are correct and those that have enough resources to make themselves correct. Her father always had the policy of maintaining your position and suing them into oblivion until they give up. So for a moment there, she fell back into old habits and couldn't be open about what she wanted to say. That Otendo points out that she is being pretty open right now. She realizes he's right and says she would want to find a partner who she could talk to like this. She then realizes that she just gave Tendo the green light as a potential partner. She is embarrassed as Tendo asks if she means what he thinks she means. But before she can give a definite answer, Kencho and Beatrix find them and feel betrayed that they would come here without them. They both immediately get naked and jump into the hot spring as well. After that, they continue on their way to the Gunma. Beatrix is worried for the safety of Tendo's parents, but he doesn't think they get taken down by something like the zombie apocalypse. Arthritis, maybe, but zombies would never get them. If they are still alive, Kencho thinks he's going to need to introduce himself to them, so naturally, his first thought is to get naked. Tendo speeds up the van to drown out Kencho and Shizuka asks if he is nervous by any chance, since the last time he visited them was three years ago. While he isn't exactly nervous, he does think it's gonna be an awkward conversation with his father after how they left things off, but his train of thought is cut off as Beatrix screams to inform him of the roadblock ahead of them. Tendo stops the van and gets out to go check the barricade, but as he approaches, he sees the tunnel full of hundreds of zombies. His village was on the other side of the tunnel, so they are worried something might have happened to them. But Tendo doesn't recognize any of the faces he knew from his village among those zombies, so he is still confident that his village is safe. Since they can't make it through the tunnel, the only other choice they have is to abandon the car and take a hike through the forest to get around the mountain and into the village. Though he has no reason to believe the zombies have overrun his village, he is starting to have his doubts about their survival. However, Shizuka points out that the other side of the tunnel had also been sealed off, meaning the people in the village had most likely found a way to trap all the zombies that were coming from the city in there and save themselves. They hear a scream coming from behind them and find this man running towards them like a maniac. But that's not the issue. It's the zombified Pumba chasing him. Beatrix quickly takes action and fires an arrow right between the jacked up eyes of the boar. Komano thanks them for all their help back there and Tendo asks why he is out here in the first place. He kinda didn't have a choice, the cities were overrun with zombies, so he came out here to escape that whole mess. The others agree with his thinking, but it wouldn't be wise to just live in the forest like this. But not to worry, this guy is built like Minecraft Steve and can build like him too. He is a master carpenter, so if he doesn't have a house, he can just make one for himself. And Tendo wants to get in on that action as well since it was on his list. He tells Kumano he must be in such a rush to finish his treehouse, so they'll offer their help to him, completely ignoring the fact that he was on his way to see if his parents were doing the zombie shuffle. But this is clearly more important. Kumano is happy to have the help and starts giving them lessons on carpentry while they build. The type of treehouse you can build depends on the tree, so you have to learn to ask the forage how to build. If the tree dies, your house dies, so you have to take note of everything happening around you, ensure the health of your tree. Tendo talks about how he always wanted to be able to build a treehouse, which reminds Kumano a lot of his son. But once Tendo asked about him, Kumano falls silent. His son was bitten by his wife who had turned into a zombie, so he had to kill them both with his own hands. He never even got to do this with him before he died, but Tendo says he's here to support him. They continue working on the treehouse until it's completed, and it's looking pretty good, but I'm definitely not going to use that slide after Kencho already went down. Now that the treehouse has been built, Tendo and the others continue on their way to the Gunma village and Tendo shows what his parents were talking about when they were explaining how they went to school. But even though it very well could have killed them, it at least ensures that no zombies would be able to make it all the way across the death trap. From here, they can finally see the village and walk further into the forest to reach it. 
While they walk, Tendo thinks about how he never came back to the village despite having many opportunities to do so over the course of the years, so he is determined to make it up to them now that he is back. But upon arriving, they find no one, absolutely no one, so Tendo is worried that they actually were killed by the zombies. So he runs around looking for them and finds everyone in a hut, doing whatever this is. He finds his mom and dad there as well and begins to apologize to them profusely for failing to do anything for them and never visiting in the three years he was gone. But his dad doesn't want to hear any of that crap and smacks him across the head. He then turns to the others and says they can stay in some of the empty rooms while they are here. He then heads off to the fields without saying anything more to them. Tendo's mother prepares a meal for all of them using the wild plants they had available in the area and Shizuka is impressed by how self-sufficient they actually are. The village is pretty small and secluded, so during the winters, they are pretty much cut off from the rest of the world anyway, so they grow a large chunk of their own food here in the village. The people from the city heard that Gunma would be safe, but once again, the fuckers who kept hiding that they were bitten screwed it up for everyone, and they had to seal off the tunnel to stop the spread. But for the uninfected people that made it into the village safely, they get to live in the spare houses they have here. But that aside, Tendo still has his mission to help his mom and dad to make up for the time he didn't spend with them. So he starts with his mom by helping her with the dishes and doing a bunch of things for her, but she tells him it's fine and he should just let her do her thing. Even if he couldn't be of help to mom, he could still help dad out on the farm. While out there, they silently work, but the silence is a bit too loud for Tendo, so he tries to strike up some small talk with his dad. However, he isn't much of the small talk type and gives short, boring answers. Tendo is at a loss because he wants to make his parents happy, but at the same time, he isn't going to give up. Later in the evening, we see his dad start to cough off blood and it's clearly not a good sign, but he hides this fact from Tendo, acting like he is doing just fine. They walk home when they happen to run across some people who came from the city and Tendo claims to have seen before. Those people go to the tunnel with zombies and do not have the best of intentions. The leader was your average loser, maybe even above average when it comes to being a loser, so for him, once the world collapsed, he couldn't be happier because that means he doesn't have to follow any more rules. So if he does the first thing a hardcore smoker would do in this situation, he robs his cigarette store, but there he finds a whole bunch of losers who must have some serious beef with their barbers. So they form a group that parallels Tendo's 100 things we want to do before becoming a zombie. Criminal edition. This was the end of episode 9. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to not miss the next part.